Good morning and welcome to this time of worship with Parkway Hills United Methodist Church. My name is Reverend Dawn Douglas Flowers and I serve here at Parkway Hills in Madison, Mississippi. I give thanks for everyone who is joining us in this time of worship and I don't know where all you are coming from, um, but if you were somehow affected by Hurricane Delta, our prayers are with you. I hope you are safe and that you have all that you need, but if there is a way for us to be in assistance, I hope you'll reach out to us so that we can share, um, share God's love with you during this time. But I do give thanks that, uh, for all of you who have chosen to be with us in this space this day. Um, if you would like to learn more about the mission and ministries of Parkway Hills, you can visit our website. You can read our newsletter to learn all about each week what is going on at Parkway Hills United Methodist Church. But now, as we prepare our hearts and minds to enter into this time of worship together, let us pray. This morning as we rise, O oh God, we hear the sounds of your world awakening. We give you thanks for another day. Bless your people this morning, at noon, in the afternoon, and in the evening with mercy and loving kindness. Show us every hour the way to love each other. Help us to see in any conflicts how to grow in faith through the struggle for peace with our family, our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, and even strangers. In Jesus' name, amen.
reading a section of scripture that we referenced last week. It's from Matthew 22, verses 34 through 40. And as we prepare to hear God's word this day, let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, in the word of God as the breath of life, amidst your people gathered here in this virtual space. Come into our hearts and minds. Stir us to know the happiness of life in your blessing. Amen. Matthew 22, 34 through 40. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question just to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. At Parkway Hills, currently, we have 10 students going through our confirmation program. They meet once a week and they're learning about Methodist history and doctrine, and they're also just learning about how to be in conversation around their faith. Now, I tell them pretty much every week that I'll be happy if they walk away from these five months of learning just carrying one thing. One very important thing about how Methodists understand living our faith. Four words, personal holiness and social holiness. Now I know that word holiness, it doesn't sit well with a lot of people. We too easily picture those self-righteous or holier than thou attitudes, which do exist, but personal holiness and social holiness. Well, for us as United Methodists, these words are about a process of growth in our own spiritual lives. As we learn more about who God is, that personal holiness, and who God is calling us to be in the world, that social holiness. Practicing acts of piety and acts of mercy and justice. Or to put it in the most simplest terms as Jesus did, love God, love your neighbor as yourself. We spent the months of August and September at Parkway Hills going through the I Am statements of Jesus found in the Gospel of John, thinking about the God we come to know in Jesus Christ. And after we finished those two months, we moved into this time together, thinking about who we are to be in light of who we believe God to be. And who we are is a people grounded in two things, personal holiness and social holiness. Love God, love your neighbor. As Jesus said, on these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. Now, I grew up in the United Methodist Church. I was baptized, confirmed, and ordained in the United Methodist Church. I serve in a United Methodist Church. And while I can easily name things about the United Methodist Church I don't like, things that make me angry, policies and practices that I struggle with, one reason that I am still here is because I have found meaning in the way the United Methodist Church holds evangelism alongside social justice. The way the United Methodist Church stresses both personal holiness and social holiness. You don't have one without the other. No, one truth our church strives to convey is the truth Jesus lifted. Life with God and life with the other are inextricably interconnected. Love God, 
love your neighbor. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Last week, we began this reflection time together looking at the importance of staying in love with God, the importance of spiritual disciplines, the truth that our journey of discipleship claiming a crucified Messiah well, it will make no sense or be sustainable without that critical first step. Stay in love with God. And this week, well, this week we look at that second greatest commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Our call to social holiness. And this isn't, this is not the first place in scripture that this is found. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. It is also found in the law. Leviticus 19, 18, the third book of Torah. I want you to listen. Just listen to some pieces of chapter 19 in the book of Leviticus. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, you shall be holy. For I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall each revere your mother and father, and you shall keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols or make cast images for yourselves. I am the Lord your God. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall not strip your vineyard bare or gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord, your God. You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely, and you shall not lie to one another. And you shall not swear falsely by my name, profaning the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not defraud your neighbor. You shall not steal, and you shall not keep for yourself the wages of a laborer until morning. You shall not revile the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind. You shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the, to the poor or defer to the great. With justice, you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt on yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Remember, none of how and who we are called to be by God will make sense or be sustainable without that critical first step of loving God. You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Stay in love with God. Because, well, did you catch some of the rest of that? Leave some of what you have, some of what is yours, out and available for those who are poor or those who live as resident aliens among you. Don't steal, don't deal falsely, don't lie, don't swear falsely, don't defraud, don't keep for yourself what you rightly owe someone else. Don't make it harder for those on the margins. Don't be unjust. Don't be partial to, well, anyone or any one group. Practice justice. Don't talk about people. Don't profit from someone else's misfortune. Don't hate. Don't take vengeance. All of this summed up with that verse, 1918. Just love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. And before, before we start to make this too simplistic and think, well, I'm a pretty good person. I don't steal or lie or defraud people. I do okay. 
This wasn't just about individual people trying to be good persons and walking the right path. No, remember, this was law given to a newly freed people. This was about people learning how to be a people, a different people called to a new way, one that looked nothing like the oppressive power structure of Egypt. Leviticus 19, well, it's found in a section of scripture called the Holiness Code. And that word holy, it is all over. Leviticus mentioned around 150 times. It is said that to be God's people, that to be holy was to be set apart, to be a different people. It was about how to be community how to love one another. And if you're like me, you hear all these things and start to think deeply about them, then you definitely need to lean into a God who is love to be able to live into this. In 2012, there was yet another version of Victor Hugo's novel, Les Mis, released onto the big screen. Now this one had Anne Hathaway, Russell Crowe, Hugh Jackman, if you remember. Um, now my husband, he is not a musical fan at all, but we made a bargain so that he would watch it with me. And you kind of watch this whole thing, which makes you think about what does it mean to love others? the unjust systems that we participate in that hurt people, the ways that maybe we think we're following the right path, but we're not. So you kind of watch this whole thing to get to that ending line that in a way pulls it all together, that line that says, to love another person is to see the face of God. So my husband and I watch this whole thing we get to this line and I look at him to see that, oh, I get why this is so powerful. Look, and he's fallen asleep. I tell him a lot that um, we have to watch the whole thing again, but that hasn't happened yet. But what a great line. What a great line to help us see the different, see, help us see in a different way the power of what Jesus speaks. To love another person is to see the face of God. Love God, love your neighbor. Reuben Job, in one of his works, well, he says this, staying in love with God involves prayer, worship, study, and the Lord's Supper. But it also involves feeding the lambs, tending the sheep, and providing for the needs of others. Feeding the lambs and tending the sheep are the signs of love that we exchange with God. And they are signs of the love that the world can understand. Spiritual disciplines not only include practices that bind us to God every day, but they also include actions that heal the pain, injustice, and inequality of our world. It is impossible, he says, to stay in love with God and not desire to see God's goodness and grace shared with the entire world. A few years ago, I spoke at the closing of a youth mission week. Love Your Neighbor was their theme. It was printed on the back of their t-shirts. And as we ended this week in worship, I reminded them of an affirmation they made together at the beginning of our week at that opening worship service where we were all commissioned for the week ahead. I looked out at this room full of teenagers and I asked them, do you remember? Do you remember what you said at the beginning of this week? We were all led in an affirmation, I said. The leader said to us, let us affirm our belief in the responsibilities of Christian service. And we all responded with this. We believe in God, creator of the world, and in Jesus Christ, the redeemer of creation. We believe in the Holy Spirit through whom we acknowledge God's gifts. 
we commit ourselves to the rights and dignity of all persons and to the improvement of the quality of life. We dedicate ourselves to peace throughout the world and to the rule of justice and law among the nations. We believe in the present and final triumph of God's word in human affairs and gladly accept our commission to manifest the life of the gospel in the world. I read through this just as I have now, and then I said, do you realize what you have said, what you have committed to? We commit to the rights and dignity of all persons and to the improvement of the quality of life. We dedicate ourselves to peace. I believe what I said to them then holds true for us today in this space. Loving our neighbor as ourselves is not just some cute tagline we put on the back of our church t-shirts or we hang on our walls to show we are Christians. No, that to me is the easy, almost self-indulgent part. Loving our neighbor isn't just about being nice or trying to be a good person whatever that means. Loving your neighbor as yourself is hard, intentional, reflective work. It is about the rights and dignity of all persons because every person carries the image of God. And it is about improving the quality of life as we live in gratitude for the abundance of life that is all around us in this great gift of creation that God has given us in love. You know, there's a story about Rabbi Hillel, a very significant Jewish religious leader, sage, and scholar from the end of the first century. And the story goes that he was challenged one time to teach the whole Torah, those first five books of the Bible containing the law, challenged to teach the whole Torah while standing on one foot. It was an attempt to show how much is in there and how hard it would be to hold oneself up under it. Now the Babylonian Talmud, a book of Jewish scholarship compiled from the third to sixth centuries, the Babylonian Talmud, well, it reports that Hillel's response was this, that which is despicable to you, do not do to your fellow. This is the whole Torah. The rest is commentary. I do believe who we are, how we are as individuals, but more importantly as community, that it matters. And, and not just because it affects our witness, but because we have the great calling of working to create and expand God's kingdom on earth. A kingdom that redefines power and privilege. A kingdom that we come to understand when we look to Jesus. And it isn't just about being nice or a good person. But you know, when the weight of that feels too heavy, or maybe you just feel that you have lost your way and you aren't sure what the next step is to take, or if you're even worthy to be a part of this great work, just stop for a minute. Take a deep breath and put it in its most simplest terms, just as Jesus did. Love God. Lean into a God who is love. And love your neighbor as yourself. May it be so. Amen. The Gift of God Oh, I may speak with bravest fire And have the gift to all inspire
is necessary to the Christian life, whereas eloquent speech, prophetic power, faith, philanthropy, and even martyrdom without love are nothing. All is nothing without love. Though I may give all I possess and striving so Love endures. It accompanies to and endures us in eternity. It prepares us for and constitutes heaven. Prophecies, tongues, and knowledge will pass away, but love never fails. Come, Spirit, come, our hearts control. Our spirit long to be made whole. Let in with love, God, every day. By this we worship and we are free. Faith, hope, and love are the sum of perfection on earth. Love alone is the sum of perfection in heaven. Now faith, hope, and love remain, these three things, and the greatest of these is love. Through God is the gift of love. Though I may speak with bravest fire, and have the gift to all inspire, Amen. One part of our prayer life as Christians is that we do lift up prayers of confession because we know, we know how hard it is um, to love as God loves. We know how hard, it is, how hard it is to be a people of love, but we also know the truth that the more we lean into a God of love, a God of mercy and forgiveness, the more we release this to God, the more able we are to be a people of love. So we'll begin our prayer time with words of confession. You can repeat these words if you like. You can simply spend time lifting up your own confessions, and then we'll move into a time of intercessory prayer for those um, that we love and for our world around us. Um, and as we do pray, you will have a response. When you hear, Holy God, you may respond, hear our prayer. But now, let us go to God in prayer. Let us pray. God of love, we do come to you this day speaking the truth about ourselves. We acknowledge what we have done and what we have left undone. Because your holiness, O oh God, well, it commands that we confess that we have neither loved our neighbors as ourselves, nor honored ourselves as your beloved creation. We have judged unjustly, regarded others ungenerously, profited at the losses of those near and distant, borne grudges, desired vengeance, and kept silence in the face of wrongdoing. 
We do long, O oh God, to live in accord with your desire that your way of compassion, kindness, and honesty will govern our hearts and minds, turning us toward lives of peace. May you indeed forgive us and lead us. Holy God, hear our prayer. God, we also come this day lifting up prayers for the earth, for its people, and for your church. We pray for people of faith in every land, in every religion, and in every home. Holy God, hear our prayer. We pray for the Church of Christ. Holy God, hear our prayer. We pray for world leaders, peacekeepers, diplomats, and government workers. Holy God, hear our prayer. We pray for trees and plants, creatures large and small, for pets and working animals, for oceans, wind and soil, for the abundance of life that is around us, that is your gift of creation. Holy God, hear our prayer. We pray for farmers in this harvest time, for those who fish and hunt, for those who ship and store what is gathered, and for those who cook and serve. Holy God, hear our prayer. We pray for children in schools, teachers and parents, and for those who have no schools. Holy God, hear our prayer. We lift up and pray for so many concerns that are on our hearts and minds this day. From those who have lost loved ones to COVID or to any number of other tragedies or illnesses. We pray for those who are still sick those still in need of healing, those who are looking for just a moment of respite, for caretakers, for those who are in need of help and healing and assistance from natural disasters, especially those who have just experienced Hurricane Delta, but so many from wildfires and tornadoes and hurricanes and flooding that have threatened parts of your great creation. God, there are many needs. And now we pause and in the silence lift up either silently or aloud those needs and concerns that we hold heavy on our hearts this day. Holy God, hear our prayer. For all that we have not named, but which you know, O Lord, we trust that you will hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I give thanks um, for all of you that have joined us in this space. Um, if this has been a meaningful time for you, if continuing to share a God who is love and be people of love in the world has meaning for you, I hope that you will give. 
so that you can support uh, the work of our church. We are a church that believes in mission and service and giving back to our community, whether that be through building bunk beds for children who have no beds, um, through working to store the pantries of our food banks in our local neighborhoods, to supporting worldwide relief efforts through the United Methodist Committee on Relief so that we can be hands and feet when those natural disasters take place. These are all things that our church believes in and that we step outside of our walls to do. We also are here to aid you as you strive to stay in love with God. So we do ask that you support our work together. You'll find information for giving on our screen. You can also visit our website or simply mail a check to Parkway Hills United Methodist Church so that we may all be in the ministry of love together. And if you are looking for a family of faith, to live out this call of love, to hold you accountable, but to also help you go grow closer to the one who is love. I hope you will reach out to us, be in contact with me or any of our staff. We would love to be in conversation with you. Our closing song is called, They'll Know We Are Christians By Our Love. And I wanted to close this time together with, with this song because I do believe that that is the importance of what it means to be a people set apart, a people called out, that they will look to us and will say, I want that. They're different. They're so full of love and life and joy, even in the midst of hard times. So as we sing, as we prepare to sing this closing song, hear this benediction coming from words of this song. All praise to the Father, from whom all things come, and all praise to Christ Jesus, God's only Son, and they'll know we are Christians by our love. May you go forth to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might, and love your neighbor as yourself. Until next week, my friends. Amen. Thank you.